guys welcome back to my channel uh, today's lesson was still based on grade 11 budgeting so today we want to look at how one can do a data collection schedule by saying that so, sales budget it can be made up of cash sales as well as credit sales so today on a, i want us to focus on credit sales what are credit sales anyone who knows <laughs> I know the answer okay credit sales are goods that are sold on credit for example let's say you go to an identity i know most of you love identity shops okay let's say you go to an identity shop and then you purchase clothes but you do not have money to pay for them instead so what are you gonna do you're gonna take those loads and then you're gonna come back and pay later so that's what we call credit sales in other words you're using your credit card to purchase goods and then you're gonna come back later and pay for them so whenever you, you do a data collection schedule there are things that you have to look at for example what is it that my data collection schedule should reflect we're saying that it should reflect the amount which is expected to be owned by data as well as the receipts from data so we're going to focus on the amount saying, okay, this is the amount that our data is going to owe us. And then at the end, this is the amount we expect to receive from them. I hope that one is clear. And then we're saying it should include the credit sales to data, the actual sales, as well as the credit police, credit police, credit police, credit police. That's the most important thing when you are doing a data collection schedule why is it important it because it's the it's the policy that tells you how you're gonna collect that money you're being owned by debtors it's more like a payment policy stating how will your data settle their accounts let's look at an example in this example we're dealing with green stores credit sales so we have been given actual sales as well as budgeted sales. The important months that we should focus more on are the ones that are budgeted since we're doing a budget. But that doesn't mean the ones that have actual sales, we're going to leave them out. No, you do calculate them based on the credit policy. So this is why the credit policy is important because it tells us how are we going to collect all our money from the data and how much are we going to collect each month so in this example what does our credit policy say our credit policy is saying that 50 percent of our sales should be paid in the same month what does this mean? It means that when a data comes to our store and purchase goods in July, before end of July, that data must settle 50% of, of the sales. And then we're also saying 30% during the month following the month of the sale. That is 30 days. That means when the data settle 50% in July, the data will also come back in August to settle 30% of, of the sales that he or she made in July. And then it also continues and saying 80% during the second month after the sales. The sales were made in July, August, it was 30 days, it's first month after the sales. September, will be our second month after the transaction month which means it's second month from july therefore the data will also come back and settle 18 percent of the sales that took place in july then when you add all these percentages it will give us 98 percent which means there is this two percent that the data hasn't paid so what are we going to do with that 2%? We're going to write it off as irrecoverable debt or bad debt. 
so let's look at this in a data collection schedule where it's been drawn and then we've seen please keep the, in mind the credit policy so this is our data collection schedule it has already been drawn up as we can see it's saying july it is eighty thousand credit sales when you look at the credit sales in july also remember the budgeted months because those are the important months that we should focus more on so we're saying 80 percent in july and sorry it's eighty thousand in july which means the data is going to settle 50 percent in the same month but july it's not our budgeted month therefore we do not include july in our data's collection period then we move along what did the credit policy say it said 30 percent in 30 days from july 30 days it is in august that means 80,000 multiplied by 30 percent in august that's the amount that the data is going to pay but still august it's not part of our budgeted months therefore we do not include it as well then we move on to 60 days they said in 60 days the data will settle 18 percent of the amount which means it's 80,000 multiplied by 18 percent and that's going to give you 14,400 this 14,400 it was it is going to be paid in september and september it is our budgeted month therefore we are going to include it in september under the collection period since september it is our budgeted month and then we move on to the second month which is august in august they made credit sales of ninety thousand, and then they're gonna pay 50 percent in the same month which means 50 percent it's payable in august august is not our budgeted month then we leave it we move on to the second point of our credit sales or credit policy it's saying 30 percent it's payable within 30 days our 30 days from august will be in september that means 90,000 multiplied by 30%, it's going to give us 27,000. And that 27,000, it's the amount that we're going to collect in September. Therefore, we include it in our collection period under September. And then we continue. It's saying 90,000 multiplied by 18%, which is payable in 60 days. Our 60 days will be in october therefore we go to our collection period under october we're going to say it's ninety thousand multiplied by 18 percent and it's going to give us sixteen thousand two hundred we move on to september september remember now september it is our budgeted month therefore all the amount that we're gonna collect within september we're going to include it in the collection period so let's look at this our credit sales will be ninety six thousand. and then what does the credit policy says we should collect 50 percent in the same month which is the transaction month therefore 96,000 multiplied by 50%, it's going to give us 48,000. Which means in September, by the end of September, we're going to receive 48,000 from our data. So we go to our collection period under September, we include that 48,000. And then we move along with our credit policy. It's saying 30% in 30 days. So 96,000 multiplied by 30%, which is payable in October, since it's the month following the hour transaction month. And it's going to give us 28,800. We go to our collection period under October, 
and then we include that 28,800. We then move on. Saying 80%, 18% it's payable within 60 days. 60 days from September will be in November. So 96,000 multiplied by 18% in November will give us 17,208. And then we know that 2% which is left out will be written off as bad debt. So we do not include it in our debtors collection schedule. And then we move on to October. Our credit sales will be 100,000. Therefore, it's 100,000 multiplied by 50%, which is payable in the same month. And then we move to October in our collection period. And then we include that 50,000. The next month, we're paying 30%. Next month, it is November, of course. Therefore, it's 100,000 multiplied by 30% which is payable within 30 days and then you're gonna get 30,000 you go to your data your data collection period and then you include 30,000 under November and then 18% will be payable in December since 30 60 days from October will be in December therefore December it's not part of our collection you leave it out and then November it's 110,000, which is 50% of the 110,000. It's payable in the same month. And then you go to November under collection period, you include that 55,000. 30% will be payable in December, and that's not our budgeted month. You leave it out. 18% will be payable in January. Still, you leave it out. Then after you will notice. You have calculated everything based on the credit policy that you were given. Now, the next step that you have to do, it is to find the receipts from data of each month. How are you going to find that? You're going to add all the amounts that you're going to receive in September. And then you put the total down there, which says receipts from data. And then October, you do the same. November, you do the same. Now, look, these questions come. After you have calculated all these amounts and you have got all these totals, where do you take these amounts to? Then, you take the amount, the cash budget. In your cash budget structure, you will see that it says cash receipts on top, and then it says cash sales. This is where you're going to include your cash sales if you have them. And then it says receipts from data. Where it says receipts from data, that's where you're going to take the, all the amounts, the total amounts that you received from your data collection schedule to the receipts from data in the cash budget as follows. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you will subscribe to my channel. Please do. And press, don't forget to press that notification button so you won't miss any of my other videos. And those who haven't subscribed, guys, please, please, please do subscribe. I promise you, you won't regret it. And this will do help you upgrade those, those marks. Thank you.